She made it by hand. You made it. Say it. I can sew a button. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I can do. <laughs> it's the best. So how are you guys doing today? How is life? Fabulous. Fabulous. Not that You're out of the hole, so life is good. <laughs> He's like so much better. Yeah. yeah. You know what the best like feeling in the world is? The best feeling in the world is when the doors like initially to the inside of the convention center or literally any building inside of Austin right now open and yeah, you just yeah, get that yeah. first yeah. gust I'm of nice cold air. You're just like, cold cold air. Air. You're just like it's heaven. And then five minutes later you realize the room is 60 degrees and it's not fun anymore. <laughs> we were at the day five screening last night and that theater is an icebox. Really good episode. Icebox. Or just to have really cheap makeup. <laughs> so yeah, I think we're gonna give it a couple more minutes, uh, waiting for Jen and uh, Shannon to get in. Both yeah, of them are probably in the Ruby panel as we speak. They've been promoting, so they'll they'll probably. I hope yeah, they're here. They'll, they'll be here at some point in time. They cheated all of you. <laughs> <laughs> so it's important most, to them. What are you guys most excited about at this year's RTX? The reaction. Hey. Oh. Good answer. <laughs> so this is the appetizer, and then tomorrow's. <laughs> That sounds like a pandering answer. <laughs> it is. I liked it. I thought it was pretty. I thought it was a great answer. I want to, <laughs> Eat the mic, Patrick. Eat so, the mic. So we, but I can just project it. So we do this every year. I feel <laughs> like... Hey, not for the Twitch people. I feel like... Yeah, true, probably true. Uh, every year we do this, I'm curious to see who came the furthest to get to RTX this year, right? Like, do you think you came further than everybody else in the room? Because the first year we did this, we had an Ozpin. We had an Aussie Ozpin. Oh, I think we might have to make all the other hands go down. Just take them down. He won. <laughs> From Germany, what part? Uh, it's half an hour south to Boston. Very cool. For your first RTX? Yeah. Welcome. Are you going to go to And London you're here instead of in the Ruby panel? What's wrong with you? <laughs> we are what's wrong with him. Mm -hmm. And that's where Wait, we're going to be. Wicked. You're that's here all the way from doing. Germany yeah. and you came that's to see us? My <laughs> oh my goodness. Phenomenal. You. Phenomenal. <laughs> All right, I think, I mean, are we still waiting? Because we, we, our time has um, started. Let's start because they're late. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll just make fun of them for being late. So, uh, we Everybody. Have, are, we are we rolling? All right. Wait, have we been rolling Never mind. the last minute? Hey! Oh, there they are! Yay, they made it! Go, 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 go. We were just making fun. Oh. <laughs> no! We were just making fun of you for being late. I did the same thing. <laughs> oh, you can see Yeah. Hi, friends. Hey there! Hi. These well, are people we kidnapped. Them. <laughs> people who are kind enough to join us today. They were to their own kidnapping. The smart ones. <laughs> yes. um, well, yeah. If we've got this stream going, then let's uh, let's go ahead and get this party started. Hey there, Rooster Team fans. How are you guys doing today? <laughs> people came all around the world to see this panel. This is amazing. We're sorry. <laughs> Get out of the way. Yeah, like, okay. it's smart. It's smart. Just yeah. preemptive apologies. Uh, let's let's go ahead and go on down the table yeah, and introduce ourselves. Uh, hey there, After Buzz TV fans. My name is Megan Salinas, and you can tweet at me at the Menguin. That's T H E M E N G U I N. And to my left, hi, all my buddies. I'm Katie Cullen. You can follow me all over the social medias at Kiaje. That is K I A X E T. And if you're one of the two, three dozen people who joined us today, you lovely human beings, use the hashtag in the room if you're going to tweet right. stuff. I'm glad, I'm glad you brought that back. I love uh, In the Room. Hey guys, I'm Patrick. Uh, I'm a Pete of the D's. You can follow me, but probably shouldn't. I'm a garbage poster about how idiotic our president is. And I just want to say, <laughs> that costume is distractingly awesome. It's, it's just the best. It's, it's just Oh my god, I love <laughs> that costume! <laughs> Kindred spirits. It's so great. Oh, I amazing. didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Nailed it. Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> it is my new literal favorite thing. It's so good. And to my left, I am Stacy Shuttleworth. You can tweet at me online at Stacy Shuttles, where I'll be crying about some show or another. So. <laughs> as, blue. as noted by her by her cosplay. Uh, hi, my name is Mark Bidonica. You can find me on Twitter at Mark Bidonica. And to our left, we have three wonderful guests that, for some reason or another, decided to join us on our panel today. Not okay. sure why, but you guys are so, so sweet. We you, you guys have the P-tape, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> we were blackmailed into coming here. You are my favorite follower on Twitter. <laughs> you told everyone about Tumblr on yeah, that. Yeah, it's yeah. not a secret. <laughs> well, these three know, need no introduction, but we're going to introduce them anyway. Uh, to Mark's left, Samantha Ireland. <laughs> a lovely and wonderful human being. To her left, the lovely Jen Brown. <laughs> 
And to her left, Shannon McCormick. No applause. Every applause needs to just be the wacky. I just feel like if I work hard enough, I can be that when I grow up. So I need a picture with you when you're done. Taller and ganglier. So just, so I love it. Those and blown you, over in the wind. The best. Those of you watching on the live stream missed it, but somebody mentioned that there's a Nuklavi joke in there. <laughs> I, have, I have to agree. Honest uh, to goodness, like you're going to be shorthand jokes for the next time we're on a show together. Probably the next Camp Camp after show. We're all going to be doing this. And no one's going to have a clue what and we're you'll, talking you'll about. You'll know. Hashtag in the room. <laughs> Like, like one of those big hugging pillows. Yeah. Yeah. But also Tweet Rooster Team, because evidently in the room is being used by like 80,000 people that aren't important enough to be here. So we got it. We got it. Well, so let's let's not waste any time. Uh, we're we're gonna go ahead and get into it. Uh, this year, basically all we're we're talking about most of our our ABTV Rooster Team shows. Uh, as many of you may know, we at AfterBuzz TV we do weekly recap shows for whatever show happens to be going on. And we here love Rooster Teeth. We have a new line, actually. We are the ESPN of television. Ooh. Yeah. So it's it just a sports setting. Yeah. We are the ABC <laughs> of television. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I know it seems like we're the C-SPAN, but no. We're interesting, I promise. Mark, you said we're the ESPN of television. There's yeah. already an ESPN on television. You know what I mean. That was, that was, that's, no, that's like Phil's that. line. Oh my God, is it? Yeah. Anyway, We're still on. testing it out. Yeah. <laughs> Market research. How is it, you guys? Thumbs up, thumbs up. We get it? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Our car salesman in the back of the room is giving an uncertain waiver. So, uh, Half power. Uh, well, Let's, uh, we, we've got a lot of shows to cover in, in our, our panel today and not a ton of time. So let's go ahead and start off uh, like RTX did. Let's start off talking about Camp Camp because Camp oh. Camp has been Already did it three times. We're good. Yeah. such a surprisingly hilarious and wonderful show. Uh, I just, I, I, every time I think they go a little bit too far, somehow they still manage to make it work. It's probably one of the best animated comedies I've seen come out in years. Uh, how are we guys feeling about the season so far? <laughs> oh my god. Do we, do we want to hit on what we saw on the panel this morning? Do we yeah, wanna sure. Do we talk about that? So we got a few announcements. There will be 12 episodes this season. The season finale is going to be a 22 minute episode because they're not working hard enough, I guess. And <laughs> their joke's not mine. And evidently it's going to be something about parents coming to Camp Campbell. Possibly. Because a fan asked something about that, and then they started making jokes about, well, that episode would need to be 22 minutes long, and it would be a lot of work. So which we totally, we totally nailed on our first episode of the after show this past Wednesday. We talked about it and said this should happen this season. We nailed did it. it. Also, <laughs> evidently, the quartermaster has a sister. Quarter sister. Quarter sister. Quarter sister. Oh, d did they announce that? I was not at the panel. They showed the they first showed part the, of the They showed a, a quick clip. clip. Oh, they did. Yes. Very short clip. They, with that whole episode. They, or they showed the whole, the Just first the part of it. Cold open. Just the, the cold, cold open. open. Sand sound effects, but they did mention that he still had pants on. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So that is, uh, that episode is one of the single um, most disturbing slash fun times I've had in an audio booth ever. And um, I, I actually helped um, with the story on that episode a little bit. They had me in because it's quite um, quarter people focused. And now I'm terrified. And uh, yeah, it's... It's something else. <laughs> Did you voice the quarter sister as well? Um, yeah, I totally voiced the quarter sister. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's quartermaster's female sister. I mean, she's like, just like him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah. I'm not sure if you're serious. I, uh, it, it was a, it was a, I don't think it's ever happened before. I made uh, Jordan shudder a couple of times. <laughs> and he, and he, he wrote the damn episode. So or actually no, Carrie wrote the episode, but but you know they're all involved in in various lines. He was yeah. quite familiar with the script and I still uh, grossed Jordan out a couple times. <laughs> so for next so for sponsors, you're going to get to watch this next week and for those of you who aren't sponsors, why aren't you? Uh, 2 weeks. Yeah. So, God, giving, given the fact that we get a little bit more of his family history, I suppose you could say, I don't know about you guys, but I always picture the quartermaster as being outside of time and space. I just never figured he had a family. So finding out he had 
at least at least one living relative, at least that the government knows about, uh, was downright terrified. Well, you know, they had time lords and time ladies, so... Uh... <laughs> that's true, that's true. Um, but one of my favorite things that we've seen so far this season is that, of course, that sing-off from episode one. Jesus. Uh, and I wanted to go down the line and ask, out of all of the other characters on the show, let's start with you, Shannon, and move on down oh, from okay. there. What other characters would you like to see have a sing-off battle? Other characters in Camp Camp? Yep. Yes. Oh, dude, I don't know. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I think it should be all of the characters that Sam plays. They have to sing against each other, and she has to maintain uh, the distinct characters between the three of them. And it's like super rapid fire. Yeah. It's like every other word is back and forth, back and forth. It's like a, yeah, yeah, it's all right. It's a battle rap. Yeah, it's oh, a battle a rap. rap. battle with the like flower scout. scout Hamilton. But they get straight street with it, right? Yeah. Like yeah. That's the only way that they could do it. That's just, yeah, it's the only, only possible way. Uh, that's my answer. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good answer. Uh, oh, I don't know. Um, I want everything. Um, okay, let me give me some three seconds to think about it, and if I don't come up with a good answer, then I'm going to shove it over to Sam. <laughs> Do you want us to come back to you? No, you're, you look, you are deep in thought. <laughs> There's something happening in your brain right now. <laughs> She's writing it already. <laughs> Why am I not remembering this? And I've seen this. What? Like this this rap battle? Who? No, 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 no. no, no. no. Oh. <laughs> Like, what happened in episode one? What There's did I a sing along. We tape live. Sing off between <laughs> Daniel and David. The uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Who else between David and Daniel. Yeah, yeah. Who else would you want to see sing on? Yeah. Um, oh, oh, my! I know my answer, but I can't say it. Oh. Because it's, it would actually ruin. <laughs> The 22 minute episode. Oh. Oh. All right, we'll put a pin. I'll just in, say we'll my pin parents. in that. That's what I'll say. I'll say Arid's parents. That's what I would like. Oh, okay. All right. Ooh, I like it. Hell yeah. Um, I think. Oh, who? Um, Neris the cute. Yes. Right, and then yes. um um. Uh, because she has a speech impediment, and then, um, <laughs> and it's so adorable. <laughs> That's like the, my favorite thing. And then, um, Astro Kid, uh, is that Space, space, space Kid? kid. Space kid. Space kid. <laughs> I would like them to rap yeah. paddle. That would God be the best. Them both. Yes. That would be real cute. I think they would, it would be so the cute. cutest thing. And, the cutest and they would be the nicest to each other. Yes. It's like an out and each other. Yeah. So sweet. Um, <laughs> I w in terms of like a, a sing off or just people who sing, I want to I want to hear the ballad of Jeremy Farts, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it turned into like a Pavarotti yeah. like yes. that's yes. the thing he's good at, but yes. nobody's asked him. Yes, yeah, yes. He's like, the best camper. Why not? He's just this soulful I mean, singer deep yeah. down. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, this oh, wonderfully Jeremy talented Farts. kid that no one will Jeremy give a chance so to. Oh, <laughs> hilarious. Uh, well, just because I think it's the next logical step, I think Neris the cute and Harrison are going to have a. Oh, at some yes. point. Right? Yep. We're leading and up to that. To a smooch at the end of it, too, right? <laughs> Who is that? It has to happen. Sure. Okay, so I, I definitely want a quarter people to sing on. <laughs> oh, God. But, but it's a karaoke. It's a karaoke battle where uh, the quarter master sings Don't yeah, Stop Believing. Okay. <laughs> and the quarter sister sings... Um, Sweet Caroline. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I was gonna go totally clips of the heart. They, they should. Uh, they should just do a duet of uh, "Don't Go Breaking My Heart." <laughs> what would that sound like? <laughs> Don't go breaking my heart. I won't go breaking your heart. <laughs> After both. Don't go breaking my. <laughs> I'm having total eclipse of the heart flashbacks, and I couldn't be happier. Um. Rap battle, I want the eye patch squirrel and the platypus. Yeah. It will be unintelligible and the best. Oh man, <laughs> it's way better than anything I could come up with. I'm just surprised that out of, uh, that of everybody, nobody picked Preston. He seems like he would be the most disappointed about being left out of some sort of sing-off. Preston would be the guy singing the King George parts in this Hamilton, let's be real. That's da, fair. Da, da, That's da, fair. Da. I also feel like for any given sing-off where he's actually aware and not brainwashed by a cult leader, he would be like, I've got notes, guys. I've got some notes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but he's what, opera trained and can't hold a tune in a bucket. But one of the best things about this show is, of course, its cast of, like, not only the the fact that it's such a fun ensemble cast on screen, but the cast behind the scene, you guys are just so 
insanely talented and funny. And uh, for season two, obviously, I hope that they would give you guys a chance to ad lib because that seems to be something that you're really good at. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the dead silence uh, after that. Yeah. It, so, it sounds like Arid's uh, conversation with the chatbot in, in episode two was totally ad-libbed. It does sound like it, was, it wasn't. Uh. No, we, uh, I have, there's, I don't do a lot of ad-libbing. I think, I think Shannon occasionally does, but I, I've, I and you guys, yeah, I've never done ad-libbing. Um, actually, no, that's not true. I ad-lib for Arid, but they never use it because I always do really dirty stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's not true. Don't Wait, and, and they don't. don't I say like really fucked up shit. <laughs> and they don't. In the arid voice, and they don't. They don't keep it. Uh, there's no. There. I, I do. Actually, that's funny. I'm thinking about that. Do I do ad lib? But I don't think they've ever used any of it. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> well, sadly, I feel like that's. that's probably all the time we have for Camp Camp because we've got a couple other shows to get more shows. We've got 84 <laughs> more shows to get yeah, through. Like, can't get talk about the you show that's to, been making me know, cry for the past closer. four weeks. Uh, uh, hold on, wait a moment. What? What was that, Sam? We're going to get to know more about the Flower Scouts. Yay! 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 That is fantastic. Can you tell us how soon? No, I uh, actually, because I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> out, of, <laughs> out of the three Flower Scouts, which one are you most excited for, for people to see the development of? Aaron. <laughs> oh, all right. uh, I have a soft well, spot for Tabby with two eyes. Tabby is surprising, but um, but Aaron, I feel like you'll get to know more on a really on a level. Because <laughs> I did. <laughs> so, but, yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> Cannot wait. So, yeah, talking, switching gears over to uh, red versus blue. Katie, how do you feel about this season? I need to stop asking for things. <laughs> because if, any, if anyone watches our reaction videos, you all know the reaction to episode 10 was 53 minutes long. <laughs> oh, God. Because I've been sitting here for the last two seasons going, you know, Wash is my favorite. We haven't had a lot for him this season. And, oh, hey, he's back. Oh, he's back. Oh, hey, we're going back to the freelancers. What? What? We are in serial killer territory. We're in a murder fridge. I am not okay. And so this is Schrodinger's watch for the third time in three seasons, and I'm done. <laughs> like, dying. <laughs> Why don't you tell us how you really feel? You guys think that's intense out there? Like, try being like six inches from that. Like, <laughs> for red and blue. Patrick's dying by proxy. I'm <laughs> really Patrick is just like, I'm gonna fucking I don't die. know. I, I was a big fan of the Murder Room. I'm a big horror movie fan. I'm like, yeah, uh, Murder Room. I'm all about it. Oh yeah, girl. When I read that script, I was like, did they do this just for me? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> They're gonna murder my character terribly. I'm so happy. <laughs> and you just turn to them and you're like, Joe, did you? Was this was this a present? Was this a yeah. birthday present, <laughs> Joe? <laughs> oh, it made me so like we were reading it. I was reading it at home, like because you know they send you the scripts, and I was reading it through and looking, and then I was like, "What the? Oh fuck! That's... Oh, that's dark. That's real dark." <laughs> you summarized everyone's reaction. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, "Oh my god, that's gross." And then also, wait, have we? Are we caught up to that? We episode? Are at, we're at episode, I want to say 14 as of last week. Right, we already, first. right, we saw the flashback. We did. Okay, yes. right, okay. We, we saw what's God making God. Temple, okay. we saw what's making Temple so cross yeah. this season. And, and we, 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 Joe was, I'll tell you right, Joe was ecstatic to tell me about that. Like, he was, he was like, oh, this is so exciting. So, it's all Carolina's fault. Like, she totally fucked up. Like, she totally fucked up. Like, he was so excited. Like, and I was like, oh, that's so awful. That's, oh, man. He was, but he was just so gleeful. Everything. He's like, oh, and then we're going to do this. And I think I'm going to do this, but I'm not sure. We'll see. I haven't decided yet. Like, he, oh, I love Joe. You're killing me. I love Joe as a person, period. Loved him before he started working for Rooster Teeth because I knew him beforehand um and as soon as i knew he was taking charge this season i was like oh this is gonna be good this is gonna be really good because he's smart <laughs> he's real smart yeah so was was he kind of like talking through it with you to like kind of gauge your reaction as to how you felt about like carolina's past coming back to haunt everybody this season 
No, more of just like, here's what's happening. <laughs> Enjoy. Here you go. Uh, I mean, and I knew some stuff was going to go on because he I mean, he had already told me before the season even started. He's like, yeah, I really want to, you know, we're going to do some cool stuff with Carolina this year. And I was like, yay. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Let's do it. She's going to turn a corner in her character development and then get murdered. Right. Well, and that's the thing. Like, I, uh, and there was more of that this season, too. And we, they started doing it last season. But, like, I get to be a human. Yeah. I get to be, like, an actual person that has feelings. Aside from just, like, I hate everything and you almost die. <laughs> <laughs> well, not know. for long. That rocket toss, though, is probably the single coolest <laughs> moment in Red vs. Blue. Like, yeah, I'd, I'd say it... it it, uh, the text fight with everybody has gotten so pl- seemingly played out now, but that rocket throw is the. Did you do the mocap for that? No. <laughs> ah, that's a shame. No, it's, <laughs> I do not do mocap for this show. No. Oh, that's, a, <laughs> be, that's so unfortunate. It would be a completely different Carolina if they had me do the mocap. Not that I'm not tough, but like. <laughs> Your reaction to the script would be a lot different. Like, no, I have to I do have what? To no. What? No. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, I know uh, Boy does uh, Carolina mocap every once in a while because my friend Aaron Alexander has told me that he's done mm-hmm. mocap for me. <laughs> and he's a big old awesome big dude. <laughs> big dude. <laughs> so big dude. what were your favorite things that Carolina and Wash did during the 10-month siesta? Dead silence. All right. <laughs> that you can talk about. Um, if you can talk about. I don't. I don't know. I didn't really think about that. I, I think Carolina <laughs> trying her hardest to be the best at being lazy was just oh, the, oh, so yeah. adorable. Oh, 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 the stuff that they showed. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the stuff from the episode. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought you were just be like in general, like oh, I don't know. I didn't <laughs> think about that. <laughs> Let's go into what NBA. What story did you develop? I know. Tell me your head yeah. and what they did. <laughs> <laughs> Tumblr needs to know. <laughs> well, we're professional adjacent, so I can ask dumb questions. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, the, the, the trying hard to be lazy thing, the band thing, I loved. <laughs> I loved the band thing. There, I know. So, so good. Um, we, there might be a song. There's been talks. I don't know if we're going to do it. But Joe and I have talked. Can we about just have every Rooster position? Teeth song, Maybe. like every Rooster Teeth series, just become a musical? At least, at least for one episode. <laughs> pretty please, pretty start please. Start the petition. <laughs> I need the unnamed Red and Blue band with Carolina as lead vocals. We just start like, that rumor here, like no, just in, like just hey, do you hear that they're doing a musical episode? And then at yeah, the we'll start it. I'll start it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we did talk about it. I don't know if we're going to do it, but it was kind of mentioned randomly and, and Joe was like could you could you sing badly and I was like yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can sing beautiful voice I did so Aww, that's, no, beautiful voice that's so sweet um yeah I was like oh there's a party that's kind of like oh the first time that Rooster Teeth's gonna hear me sing it's like gonna be my shitty voice and not like <laughs> my pretty voice I don't care <laughs> it's gonna be hilarious if we do it nah I don't care um, but it'll be fun if we get to. It's been tough. Who knows? I I would also not put it past Temple to be like so like have so much of an ego that he would give himself a villain song. Like <laughs> he's just that. I mean, he looks up Shakespearean quotes for dummies. For goodness sake! I'm so. also the best. <laughs> I'm Mr. Dick Master. <laughs> I'm Mr. Fun. <laughs> But, but as you guys brought up, it is such a shame. Like, this is like the worst timing to be put in a murder room because... Is there ever a good time to be put in a murder room? <laughs> well, no. But, like, when, when you've had a pivotal moment of character development for two of the series' most beloved characters, yeah, I think murder room is, like, the last thing you want to do as soon as you have a very pivotal moment. Uh, in particular, a moment where those two characters held hands Aww. and had a so, very deep understanding so, with one another. So, so tender. So what's your opinion on car wash? <laughs> I'll, watch, I'll watch that damn show. I died. <laughs> my character died. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> my feelings. Those are my feelings. I wrote. I brought you back last year. That's true. Could that be an official statement? For like four I mean, lines. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's better than a poke in the eye of the sharp stick. 
Well, it's always it's always great when we get moments with CT, and it's always oh, I think four seven niner as well. I think those two. I was like, why can't we do more <laughs> with four seven niner and CT? I know because our animation niner. budget went to the Mercs. Leave, leave, leave. Yeah, so yeah, so good at everything. the best. Fantastic. But yeah, so no, we we. We hold hands. Oh my God, hold hands. That's exciting. I know, it was it's a yeah. big deal. It was it's a big real deal. big deal. So the fandom has completely lost its mind over yeah. that. And the yeah. question is car wash or no car wash? Uh, <laughs> dude, I don't know. And it, like my attitude about shipping is like whatever you want to do, like who fucking cares, you know? Like so I if you deal with the Gumby thing a minute. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I just, I don't so I, I mean if like, you know, if it's canon, uh, well, who cares? If you don't want it to be your thing, then like don't let it be your thing is my is my feeling, you know? And you can you can come up with reasons why that's not a thing. But if you love it, then there are some pictures for you. <laughs> the world's <laughs> best shipping you have a new answer. answer. They didn't yeah. need to go there. You have a new wallpaper well, no, now. I mean, it's, 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 it's like them holding hands. You've got the image already then in the show for you. Yeah. Someone's right. already put it through yeah. blingy and put like all the hearts on the sparkly text. <laughs> yeah, they can everything. put sparkly text on it. They can like, you know, make a you know, little murder stalking board on their wall if they want to. <laughs> just, like, as you do. As you do. <laughs> Too late, Temple's beat him to the punch. <laughs> cool. Mark, how do you oh, feel about it? Do you do you ship it or not ship it? It, was, it just seemed really friendly. I, you know? Yeah, it Me seemed too. like we've, it seemed like a moment where these two people have literally gone through hell and back, and it's like, can we just stop and be human for a second? Exactly. exactly. Let, let's be alive in this moment. Exactly. And yeah, and I also think the take off your armor was an, an immediate an immediate diffusion of oh, any sort of a thing. Amazing. So but. we... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. So we recorded that together. They had us come in. I think they were just like, wow. we want to... This, you know, this scene is pivotal, it's important, so let's just have the chemistry in the room be right, and we'll just have you guys both in the room together. But it was weird, so we wouldn't pick up each other's uh, mics. We were, we were standing in opposite corners back of the booth, back. back to back, so we weren't, <laughs> we weren't watching each other. And we get to the line, take off your armor, and my first recording, I said it as suggestively as I possibly could. <laughs> and every... She lost it, so everybody lost it, because it was really, it was, it was like there was just missing the porn base underneath this, you know? Can you give us a sample of that? <laughs> it was, uh, anyway, it was, yeah, it was just, take off your armor. <laughs> and I immediately just She's went, whoa! <laughs> no! <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> then they're like after after they calmed down they're just like uh maybe tone that down a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> take it down a couple notches yeah, just dial it down just a not about that not about that well i really uh like even though i feel like it was pretty easy to see through uh through what like, sort of temple was being the bad guy i really like the idea of him sort of at least in his own mind being able to justify his actions i thought that was really cool and not to mention the initial kind of murder mystery kind of who done it set up at the very beginning i like that we got almost immediate payoff for it because it means we're only like halfway through the season right it means that there's going to be even more stuff to come where I thought that would be like overarching stuff. Well, so this season's been really good at here's a premise. Wait, no, okay, we were messing with you. Here's the premise. Wait, no, okay, we were messing with you. Actually, that Merc is just a lawyer. Actually, there's this. Actually, there's that. Oh, and now there's a murder fridge. There's, there's been your premise. a lot of great Mr. X, and I'm really enjoying yeah. it. Yeah, Joe's been, been doing... <laughs> it was episode 10! I should have known! But Joe's been doing a really great job of, like, keeping you guessing as to where this series is going to go, and it has clearly broken Katie, and I'm really sorry it's, about that. I'm in pain! I think this is what pain feels like! It's become a therapy session at one point. Like, like I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I just want to find a significant other who loves me as much as you love Red. <laughs> We'd all be better for it's it. It's an abusive relationship. <laughs> Fair enough. That's disgusting. Uh, but wow! <laughs> what? Are how you saying I can't find love? No, I'm saying Are you that. Saying I can't find love. Saying that abuse is disgusting. <laughs> and just anyway, let like, yeah. no. No, let, but let Mark talk. Hi. No. Um, Joe is the best, and in case you missed it, we had him on, not this last, but the episode before of our after show for Red vs. Blue. Go check it out. He gave us a lot of. Uh. No, I can't answer that. Stuff. I can't answer that. <laughs> he gave us a lot of uh, interesting 
maybe hints. Took mm-hmm. notes on our discussion. <laughs> he's just like, oh, that's what you think is going to happen. Interesting, interesting. He's he poker faces pretty well. Um, he just get oddly silent at, at certain points, and he it was really funny. An adorable cat. Very cute, very cute. For those of you who like cat videos on the internet, um, well. Now, I kind of want to switch gears again and talk about uh, a show that uh, near and dear to my heart. Uh, not that any of the other Rooster Teeth shows aren't. They're all fantastic. But my personal favorite at the moment would be Ruby. And so I want to switch gears real quick and start talking about Ruby. Uh, <laughs> Because, oh my goodness, if, that, if we're talking about shows that put me and my heart through the ringer, definitely. Um, we had a new addition to, uh, to the panel this season. The lovely Stacey Shuttleworth uh, joined us this season. And I don't know about you guys, I think she's fantastic. Stacey, how did you get into Ruby? No, I, I mean, it's something I saw online and just kind of started watching, and it was like instant love. <laughs> this is a wonderful little crazily animated thing that was just fun to watch at first. <laughs> and then, by the time it was and then it became a chore. <laughs> no, no, and then it became heartbreaking. And by that point, you're already so invested that you just cry through the episodes, and it's all fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. Did Fine. you did you have to marathon before hopping onto our panel, or were you already caught up? No, at that no, no. Point? I'd been I'd already been watching. You were already yeah. in it, and you're mm-hmm. like, guys, I just got to feel my feelings right now. I think I got to marathon through the first season, and then after that, it was watching them as they aired. <laughs> oh man, this is one show that I haven't like. Part of me wishes I could just binge watch it on the first go because waiting week to week is fairly agonizing. It's, it's a little easier now that episodes are edging more towards 10 and 15 minutes as opposed to five. Yeah. So, it's getting close. It's like easier. They're getting to the point where it's almost like every episode is almost the length of a full anime episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like, almost like they have a dedicated animation studio now. <laughs> <laughs> Which is pretty fantastic. But guys, thoughts and feelings, mostly feelings, on season four, because we've had an abrupt shift in tone after the events of season three. I'm so incredibly grateful for Jim and Randall. <laughs> <laughs> Just am. The knuckle of That, oh my You gosh. might have to explain that joke Shit, first. Satan pony at the end. I know, the so my eyes pony. goes over too. Right? That terrifying the, grim at the end. It is, a, I think it's either, it's some form of Scandinavian. It's Norse or Swedish, or I don't remember the exact details. And I know that someone out there will be like, it's actually this. And I will be grateful for that tweet when it comes in, but I don't have it in front of me right now. Um, a, hmm? It might be Scottish. Scottish. Origins within Scottish Isles, yeah. It's this mythological creature that is essentially the torso of a man supplanted on a horse like it's riding it. The whole thing is skinless. It breathes out the plague. Like, like this this thing is a harbinger of death. And it makes me so happy. a grim version (laughs) of it. Me too. Because it's not already (laughs) terrifying. (laughs) Oh, man. I have the the biggest grin on my face when they they Uh fully introduced it. It Uh just made made me so filled with glee. And then I went full on Stretch Armstrong, like, oh, oh that's a oh, yeah. village. But, okay. but you know what is uh, the, as great and as much as I love the Nuklevi, the really upsetting thing is the way it's tied into Ren and Nora's storyline. And getting to find out their backstory was <laughs> definitely so gratifying, but at the same time, it puts their relationship in a completely new context. Oh, yeah. Sam, how did you feel like getting to, getting to see that finally fleshed out? Um... I knew that their relationship, that there was uh, some kind of tragedy involved. I didn't really know for the longest time, um, but I did know that like uh, parents were involved and everything in their families. And um, so I was really excited that we were going to actually get into it. And when I got the, um, when the script started coming in, it was very, very like, oh, I'm going to cry now. It was very emotional. I was like, oh my goodness, like this is actually incredibly traumatic, and it puts. I don't know, put a lot of weight for me as like a voice actor um, to get, bring that to, for my character, you know, like to give her more, you know, gumption or, to, or just the overall relationship between Ren and Nora. It just, it became so solidified in my brain, like these guys are in it together always. And um, I just, yeah, I loved it and I'm really, really glad that we got to 
start saying it. I mean, there's more that's going to be mm -hmm. revealed. I don't know when, and I still don't even know what that stuff is. But uh, I know there's more to come. And I, I will say, like, watching the episode after reading it, I was a mess. I was like, I didn't think it was going to hit my heart so hard. And like, I knew it was going to happen. And I just, the particular, ep you know, the whole flashback episode, and I think that's like episode 10 or something. And then the very last episode in their interaction, I was just like, I love, I love everything about this so much. <laughs> and I think it just, you see them as young adults now. We don't mm -hmm. see them as kids. Sure. which I really like. Um, I'm really glad that they chose to do the, even this, I think it's like, what, seven months or something like that. But I feel yeah. like that they grew up so fast. And I think it's really lovely to see, especially for, at least for Nora, we see her as such a child, but she is more than that. Yeah. And with Ren, we've always wondered what has been so subdued about him, what's kept us from knowing him more and now we just know like <laughs> so much yeah. and it's it's just really beautiful so that's my long-winded answer well <laughs> given that that bit, oh yes absolutely like given that that part of their lives has and that's sort of something that they now have resolved and that they can now p move past where would you like to see their relationship go in the future well um i don't i like what we were given I didn't know that the helicopter scene happened happened where they um, held hands like at the end I didn't know because I didn't have lines so uh, when I was reading them <laughs> if I don't have lines on the page I don't know what's going on no, like, you don't record <laughs> <laughs> um, so I didn't know that was gonna happen so it was just as much a surprise for me as it was for everyone that was watching and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, so much is gonna happen, right? So that's, I, I would like, because they're, they're, gonna, they're older, I, I don't know, I would like them to have a, a relationship, but I don't, I don't know if that's ever gonna happen or be appropriate there, for yeah. what There the might not be a time be. for yeah, romance. Like, yeah, yeah, for there's sure. a lot of shit that's gotta happen. So um, like, a lot of things have to be <laughs> taken care of at this point, so I don't think that's such like an intricate thing right now but that's what I would like I would really I would like there to be a relationship as they grow older so that's my take it's, it's hard to romance in the apocalypse yeah, yeah. again more important things going on yeah. um but Although that is but the, like but love but that's human nature yeah, though yeah, like, like, like it's been proven to, like during history in times of like horrendous horrible sorrow fucking historical events yeah. people still have to have joy. People still need to find love. Like it, it I'm just, not gonna it, get heavy, but just you know, yeah. it's still like yeah, for yeah. Sure, for it, sure. I mean, you have to. There are things that you have to cling to in order yeah. to hold yeah. on. And to that's how humanity. Some, that's how people come home from wars, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, we'll see if it's a if it's important and if it's gonna happen. But I hope it does because I think I don't know. It would be um, that'd be so sweet. It'd be so sweet. <laughs> what? You're, if you're gonna pick me, and then I think also just because of their age, that's happening. Yeah. You know, that's for true. that age in our lives, well, you start falling in love, or you think you start falling in love, and, um, <laughs> and so it's yeah. Well, I don't know. Speaking uh, of romance, we got a little bit of Pira back in this season. Oh my God, guys, I cried that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she Who's she it? show of hands. Who cried? Oh. I cried when I read this script. It was not okay. <laughs> I cried recording it. It's okay. <laughs> but I yeah. did a little bit, and so did everybody else in the booth. It was hard. It, it's it's hard. It's hard. It's it's a it's a really beautiful scene. It's gorgeous. It's really well handled. I thought they did it nice. I thought it was nicer. Um, a much friendlier version of what I told them they should do. Mine was <laughs> way meaner. What, um, what, did you, what did you tell them to do? I told them that they should have Jean obsessively watching the Pumpkin Pete's commercial. <laughs> <laughs> so then you get funny and sad. So you get like Jean crying, but then you see me going like, ah, cereal. Like, uh, well, that's I, what I told I, them. I, 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 
I had a very visceral reaction walking down the halls of the convention center yesterday when we went to go pick up our badges, uh, seeing the pumpkin pea uh, <laughs> banners that they yeah. have hanging in the hall. I had a very visceral reaction and I started taking pictures and I was basically screaming about it, not realizing that the people I was walking with hadn't necessarily been caught up. So they just, as, as, we, as we continued walking, they're like, so she dies. And I went, oh no! Wait, are those people in our house? Yes. Oh my god! I, I, I recently started showing a friend of mine, Ruby, and we got through season two, and he's like, I think that Pierce is my favorite character. I like her a lot. I, I definitely had. I've done it. Yeah. I've done it. I did it to someone I know who I forgot was a Ruby fan because we both go to a different convention. We both do Fantastic Fest. And we were hanging out at Fantastic Fest and I just, I don't, I knew he was a fan of Ruby. Right. That's all I knew. And then, but we were talking about something. I'm like, oh, well, you know, I'm dead. And he goes, what? <laughs> and I was like, oh, fuck, Terry, I'm so sorry. I just assumed it's been out forever. Like, why have you not watched it? Well, last, <laughs> at this point. Kira was set up for death. Like, oh, yeah. Her oh. name was based on From the get-go. Them, but, like, we all knew that. Yeah. And then we all got comfortable. I know. And I that's know. That's a mistake. The, uh, I knew the whole time. Try keeping that secret in for three fucking years. Oh, and I, Sorry, I cut Even off. looking back at like our after shows where we had you on as a guest, like asking like where where does Jean and Pierre's relationship go from here? And you're like, oh. <laughs> Check it with me August of Nothing next year. year. <laughs> <laughs> All over you. Um, that, was, that was a hard thing to. That, it wasn't hard to keep a secret, but it was just I felt bad. Anyone that talked to me, I felt terrible because I knew what was going to happen like I just like was like oh please oh, yeah. don't get definitely, too attached definitely well, felt bad anytime I talked to anybody um, like last year at, here at RTX uh, somebody had just gotten through season two and they're like oh yeah Pura's my favorite character I'm like yeah she's so cool <laughs> yeah. well, how did you feel about Miles firing the stuffed Pira's out of the t-shirt cannon <laughs> this morning what yeah, he was fine. At the just, Ruby panel. He stuffed them in, in a big uh, wiener cannon and just fired them into the audience. Oh, really? Yeah. That's, uh, that's Miles' relationship to Pira in a metaphor right yeah. there. <laughs> the wiener cannon. Well, talking about... The really kind of messed up ones, like the ones where my ears are off, those dolls? Yeah, the, the stuffed, stuffed ones. ones. The stuffed ones, yeah. <laughs> those are terrifying looking. <laughs> well, I got one, and it's great, but one ear is sewn up here, and one's, like, on her cheek. It's <laughs> so hilarious. Like, it's so miss Like, super miss And she's like, mm, there's a little face. <laughs> Talking about how important it is for a show to have... Um, actions with consequences how would you like to see like further ramifications of Pira not being in the show anymore how would you like to see other characters dealing with that or do you feel like it's just something they need to move on from oh no I think seeing them deal with it is good because that's I mean that's real life that's yeah. that's what you do if something tragic like that happens to you you just don't like forget it you're not just like ah, I'm over it <laughs> yeah we have it's friendship, stated. so we're great. Uh, it, I would, you know, you know what I missed and what I would like to see, but it's too late now, is I would have liked to see a funeral. I would have liked to I see like, a yeah, memorial. I, I would have liked life. to see sure. her family. I would have liked to met her mom and her parents. Like, flashback yeah. episode. That's, yeah, that's what I wanted. Oh, there's, yeah. there's still time for that, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah maybe. Like, once, yeah. if they ever find each other, it's... It, I, think it's we we all need to grieve now and have a moment together yeah, like, it, yeah. there's still a chance for it i'm yeah. sure it just hasn't happened that's what i want to see yeah. well that's what i want to again see. it's a show with a lot of really interesting character dynamics and one of the most interesting i think this season was actually ozpin's uh character dynamic with oscar of all things uh and so i was get, real confused <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I was so that's, a, that's okay, so are Miles and Carrie. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, walked, I walked into the booth and I was like, okay, what's going on? Because um, I just read this episode. What the fuck? <laughs> no, sorry guys, but like, I didn't get it. I was like, I, 
I didn't get it. Well, no. Shannon, you've known about this sort of development for a little bit, but it's, it's a little different kind of like seeing it, at, like thinking about it in the abstract and actually seeing the way it's developed on a script. So, uh, so the, what's going on with Oscar and Ozpin is half... Uh, long-term master plan from Miles and Carrie and the, and the writing team, and half winging it from week, week to week. Uh, <laughs> so, that's like, the whole show. pardon? That's, that's a the whole show. show. That's yeah, uh-huh. yeah, exactly. But but unlike say Pira, um, yeah. where it was like they knew she was gonna die defending the school. Um, that uh, you know from from the beginning, like it was never it was never like okay. So then Ozpin gets killed, but not really because he's going to just inhabit a new host. Um, that was never really presented, and so then they they went that direction, and they're kind of still feeling out how the host symbiote relationship <laughs> works exactly, so we're still feeling our way through it. Does it does it put your perspective of Ozpin in kind of a new light thinking that all this time through the other seasons he's had a voice or he's potentially had a voice in his head that whole time? <sighs> Or is he the voice in the head that subsumed the host? God. See? <laughs> See? Katie's, Katie's, Katie's probably closer to where it's going, <laughs> but it's still not locked down. Sorry, Oscar. So it's either, like... I, don't know. I stopped watching. <laughs> <laughs> I stopped. When he's like, he's like, he's... Um, so, like, yeah, he's in Oscar... Um, and so then, the, what is the name? What is Ozpin exactly? It, it's uh, what I've recorded for what's coming up. It, it, it's clearer. Um, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So it, it becomes clear. It's a little. It's a little Yu-Gi-Oh. It's a little Avatar. Ooh. It's a little. You know. It's got that kind of vibe going on. So yeah, yeah. I appreciate it's that. a little. There's a little Naruto in there, I guess. I don't know. Like I don't. You know. Osman's in a cage. Yeah, he's a, He's got. He's Aww. like. I'm the. He's the. He's the nine-tailed fox yeah. inside of Oscar, and there's gems and shit, and I don't know. Oscar's got this weird <laughs> tattoo. And on there's, his there's, see, there's, there's 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 chakra seals and shit. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, it, it, what we'll see in in the upcoming season will um, m- will be clarifying for that relationship between Oscar and Ozpin. All right, I like that. Yeah, I'm excited. It'll be I'm very terrified. interesting. It'll be great. <laughs> it's also still completely up in the air and contingent <laughs> and confusing, <laughs> but but clearer than completely confusing. <laughs> It'll be fog instead of mud. I think nothing's final until it's released. Yeah. Definitely. Or or until two seasons after the fact. Yeah. <laughs> We're just, ah, shit. Let's just retcon all this shit. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> it was a dream. <laughs> so They're still alive. alive. Somewhere a small child is <laughs> Ozpin ate so some cool. bad clams. Yeah, all of this shit. It was just, he was just, <laughs> fuck, he was a hallucination. <laughs> it's in a snow globe. <laughs> we wake up in the Matrix. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> well, given that we, I mean, again, they have a very interesting dynamic because Oscar for a long time didn't even want to acknowledge that Ozpin's voice in his head was real. He has no idea whether or not this entity in his head is just the product of his him going crazy or if it's a voice that can be believed. And if so, like is this voice helping me or going to be to my benefit? Like, I don't know. Where where would you like to see that relationship go? Because if I heard a voice in my head, I immediately would not trust it. You go back on the medication. Oh yeah. Oh, they're gonna they're gonna work they're gonna work together, and uh, and uh, it's gonna be a like uh, you know a thing like a Pacific Rim kind of a thing. Yes. <laughs> They're going to pop into the, a giant he's, robot. So Oscar, Oscar's, a, Oscar's a mech, and <laughs> Ozpin is in... Yeah, I don't... Yeah. But they, but they got to get... They got to get... They got to work out the kinks, you know? They got to run... Okay, moving it correctly now. Yeah. <laughs> totally. I want my cane back. 
but but it's a, but it is interesting. Like when you were you were talking about the quartermaster earlier, I discovered because also Wash is indestructible. That uh, all if you need a character who is outside of space and time, I guess I have to do the voice for him. <laughs> <laughs> Some sort of weird immortal side character, like who's in, <laughs> e everywhere at once. Um, yeah. So uh, that. Yeah. So is there something we should know about you then? <laughs> Are you about me cast? personally? I'm 800 years cast. old. <laughs> <laughs> You're killing it. You're killing it. <laughs> That checks out. So we are we are running a little short on time. Um, I just wanted to go uh, across the panel. Any final thoughts on season four of Ruby and and or exciting thoughts about what season five could bring? I've done enough agonized screaming for this panel, I think. So I'm just going to pass that is on. Is there ever enough? Uh, <laughs> she say, lives with me. <clears throat> there is enough. <laughs> uh, I really, really dug Nora's arc this season. I, yeah. Not only because we're friends, but like also like it was awesome because. It, I genuinely really admire people who have been through shit and continue to be optimistic when they've yeah. seen the worst in the world and continue to project positivity. And like Nora was really fun at a superficial level, but when you get to know like all that she's been through, she's much more of an even admirable character. And I thought you crushed it. Again, not just because you're here, it was awesome. So, and I'm not gonna leave, I'll leave predictions on the table for, uh, for, for future shows. But anyway, it was my favorite part of the season. Thank you. Yeah. Nora's the best. Yeah. She is. Yeah. I've made no anyone that ever asked me. I'm never shy about it. Nora is my favorite same. character. Oh, y'all are so nice. Favorite. Thank you. She's all right. <laughs> Look at his jacket. Mark, Mark, you need to you need to stand up and do do a little do twirl. A little twirl. <laughs> yes. Oh, He's all Nora up. Stacy um, made that I have for named him this for anybody. Brora. Who made it, like. Brora. I love that. <laughs> and Stacy made the jacket. She she does her own cosplaying thing. She made her her pure of course as well. It's beautiful. Yeah. 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 It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So Stacy, oh, thoughts yeah. on season. So kind of going off what Patrick was saying about okay. just kind of seeing everybody's strength and how like I mean they've all been through some shit at this point, right? <laughs> and seeing how everybody is kind of dealing with that, um, and I like the variation. It seems like a very real kind of exploration of how different people can handle things. Uh, so you know, just waiting in terrified anticipation for more. <laughs> Seriously. That's about where I am. I'm excited to see where Jean goes this season because he seems like he's losing a little bit more of himself as we go further and further, mm -hmm. especially after Crow told the story of the two brothers. Totally. Um, he's just, I can't, he's just starting to not be able to handle stuff. Well, the world's not what he thought it was, right? Yeah. So I think that's such a shift. Yeah. So I think the season seems to be a lot about loss, not just Pira and like the obviously Nora's backstory, but also his loss of like <clears throat> faith and like what the world was before. I'm totally Say like, probably loss, loss of innocence. Yeah, absolutely. loss of innocence yeah, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Um, so I'm I'm looking forward to that, and all, I mean all of season four it was just on bated breath to see, and just hearing hearing Pira's voice at the first couple episodes, just like. What are they yeah. doing? Yeah. Um, not okay. That not okay. So okay. No one's not okay. okay. How dare you? Okay. Nobody's okay. And then they, they sort of fulfilled the, the Joan of Arc thing of the hearing voices of the, mm -hmm. of the dead. And mm -hmm. so that it, I want to see more of the source material of these characters a little bit more, which, yes. which was cool. Yep. And uh, the wooden hammer, god damn it. <laughs> Just thinking of the wooden hammer in the flashback. Oh, we like, ah. <laughs> A little baby. Of tears. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit more character insight. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. Mm -hmm. Guys, final thoughts? Um, the stuff that I said, uh, yes. And then, um, <laughs> and then what I, I really liked Yank's story. Yes. Oh, yeah. I thought her story was really, really powerful. Um, I don't know, something just like hit a nerve with me every time we watched something that happened. Any scene with her trying to understand that the world that she's in now with one less than what she was used to. I mean, I, I thought her storyline was powerful and she had to overcome as well. And I loved the relationship. I, I do like, I like Bernie's voice too as her <laughs> dad. And, um, but I, I think that whole um, plot, I liked that a lot. I think I, that was, I like that just as much as the Nora and Ren stuff. Um, the the scene the scene where Yang comes in to um, her dad and the teacher's talking. Yeah. And then she it's like no you're not a student anymore we're all just inhabitants in this world and we're all together that was a, that was awesome yeah I love that, I love that. Yeah. so good but I'm I'm interested to see I don't I actually don't know much about what's going to happen next 
to be honest. I, I recorded a little bit, but it was so very, very early on, and I don't, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so I'm very interested to see what happens. <laughs> yep, yep, nod and smile. So, Lisa oh. Lavender, are we getting... Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Actually, yeah. Like, joining the team? She's joining us well, as Lisa's joining us. Well, <laughs> running a little yeah. short on time. We do, really quick, we, we want to address the fact that um, there isn't really a whole lot to talk about as far as crunch time goes. Uh, it was a fantastic show. For those of you guys who haven't watched it yet, uh, go watch it Great immediately. have a first membership. And Wonderful. then And then check out our after show. And be scared uh, of Shannon. Yes. Oh, God, that was great. <laughs> One of the funniest things I, I have ever seen in my entire life. Um, and sadly, we don't have any word on whether or not there's going to be a season two. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Patrick, thoughts? Uh, go watch the show. We had, a, we had a fantastic time with our, our after show. We had uh, Andrew Disney, the creator and writer of the show, Sam Levine, who's one of the stars. If you guys haven't seen it, check it out. I, mean, I love it. Go, yeah. they, they were an open book after that first season, yeah, so they, they had some really interesting things and to say. So really fun behind the scenes stories, too. Yeah, totally. um, yeah definitely check it out. Uh, so, we want to use the rest of this time that we have for questions. Uh, since I've got the hand mic, I'm going to run on down here. Uh, <laughs> hands up if you have a question. Anybody have a question? And if you have a good question, I might throw one of these at you. Ooh. Maybe. You're bribing <laughs> them. So, listening to the Ruby for uh, soundtrack. Louis uh, Nature, it, it, to me it's like, I think that's the relationship between Ospin and Salem, how Osp Salem was probably the first person after the Maidens that Ospin decided to help, and she wanted to understand the Grimm in a different way from everybody else, sort of scientifically, and decided to do an experiment that made her turn into that, into that mom, into what we know her as today. Hmm. That's a good theory. Yeah, yeah. solid. Yeah. It's really I like that theory. Uh, anything about Salem's relationship with Ozpin is insanely fascinating. Thank you. And it's probably true. <laughs> <laughs> it's true until all, all, all theories about Salem and Ozpin are true. Because, yeah. Schrodinger's theories. Um, this is just one thing that I've uh, always been wanting to see since the first volume was something about summer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because we've now gotten flashbacks in Ruby, but we still don't know anything really about Summer. Yeah, the first time I heard uh, Red Like Roses Part 2, I literally stopped what I was doing. I was listening to it at work. Uh, I she was driving on. at the time. Uh, I literally <laughs> stopped what I was doing and like put my head on my desk because I was feeling so many feelings. Uh, I'm really glad that nobody was in the office at the time because it was super early. But yeah, um, I think more about Summer's relationship with her daughters and the, the absence that she left. Um, when, when she passed away. Obviously, that had a profound effect on Ruby, so it would be great to learn more about her, because, yeah, uh, she's just in photographs and in the occasional, like, still frame here or there. So, yeah, thoughts, guys? More of Summer? Trying not to burst into Nickelback here with a mention of photographs. So, uh, <laughs> other questions! Photographs. Other questions! So, you guys didn't really talk about, like, what happened with Blake and song on um, there? I, I forgot what it's called, but what do you guys? Were, yes, and uh, I was curious about what you guys were thinking about what happened with the black thing on the island compared to what happened in Vale, and what was happening in in that part of the world. So, like in terms of the the white fang. Yes, and like how would you like to see that be played out compared to? I mean, it looks like it's going to be a two-person power trip. With, oh yeah. Uh, with Blake and. Why my son? I saw. I, sorry, I saw an adorable baby son downstairs, and it and it's just been in my brain. Um, but I, I figure it's, it, it'll they'll probably it'll be a, a sect, and they're going to be leading a front against the White Fang, and it, it'll just be a big, gross battle. I'm expecting a horrifying political coup from the White Fang. Hmm. Like, yeah. Yeah. House of Cards style. I I think from what we're going to be so seeing pretty. is more of Lady Ilya. Uh, that adorable chameleon girl. I think she's great. And you don't cast Jeremy Lee in a role if you're not going to give her some interesting character development. It's my thought. So way in the back. Ooh. Blake. 
Or Blake, I'm calling on people for you. Or Blake, do you the have guardians a have questions. Are you going to be taking on the white fang this season? <laughs> Am I? <laughs> oh wow, that was a, that was a good blade. Really good. Really good. Bags full of tea. I was uh, thinking, are we gonna see more of Yang's mom in the next season? Cause she kind of popped up again. Uh, I will be gobsmacked if Raven. Raven. Yeah, I was blanking for a second, but I'm like, are, well, is she? Not exactly mom of the year. No, no, she's horrible. But are we gonna, you know, is she gonna appear more? Cause she kind of popped up in season two, and then. Then she popped up again last season, yeah. so. I will be gobsmacked if we do not. Like, absolutely, if we don't. Yeah, she's like, everybody gets one. So, yeah. sure, so at some point, she's bound to pop up. Uh, we've got one over here and one over there. Um, given the world of Remnant on uh, Faunus and Faustian X, am I the only one thinking that Blake's dad might be human? <laughs> He's a panther, evidently. Like the the he fur, he has huh? He has toe beans. He has toe beans. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> toe beans. He has toe beans and chest fur, and those were his like. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I love Gara so much. But I'm Although, like putting thought into it is my point. Well, yeah, that's, I. That's occupying mental space. That's possible. Awesome. Yeah, I so. I kind of thought he might have been for a good while until I realized his name was Bagheera. I was like, Bagheera, that's perfect. My favorite Jungle Book character. Yeah. Well, Awesome. Who's also a so, very harried dad. <laughs> who do you think the first people that, uh, oh, my mind blanked. Uh, it's going it's around, hot. it's contagious. <laughs> Weiss and, I really can't remember. Winter? Uh, no, but like, Weiss Her horrifying and... tiny child brother? Wesley, right? Not his name. No, well, like, Whitley. They're, Whitley. They're, they're kind of going off on their own adventures, and I was wondering if you thought maybe they would be, like, trying to find some of their old teammates. Probably. Uh, Weiss made an, uh, made an escape. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, guys. Thoughts? Yes. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, to be fair, we're not quite sure which direction Yang went in when, uh, when she was riding her motorcycle. I assume she was trying to find Ruby. I'm on the rum team Ruby. She totally took a right. I think so, too. Took like that right, right? I think so, too. She took a right. Thank you. We put it in bed. We settled. I, I can it's done. It's <laughs> Personally, I think Weiss went to winter. That's, that's my guess. That's the only family she has left, and going with her sister might be a good way to regroup. I that's feel like she got the blue and white hell out of that kingdom entirely. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, they could, they could all very well be converging on the same spot. And I mean, they were closing the gates, so if you don't get out of that kingdom, you're not getting out of that. So. <laughs> to get their ASAP. Hi. Uh, well, first, uh, I was at Carrie and Gray signing. They told me to say hi to you guys. Oh, so my God. I was going to be here. Yay. Uh, that's, yeah, that's them. I was going to ask. I was wondering. Like, like, Next level, get a tattoo. Yeah, it's pretty good. Because <laughs> I go to Dr. Who convention, and we just do tally marks because of the whole silence thing. But I'm like, no, this isn't, this isn't Gallifrey. There aren't enough ribbons. What's going on? I don't know what you just said. But <laughs> <laughs> welcome anyway. To the Regional. Welcome to the panel. It happened. It happened. Anyway, have you guys considered doing a show for day five? We oh. decided not to do a show for day five because it is sponsor-only content and it's long-form sponsor-only content, and we didn't want to be the people who were like, well, if you don't have a sponsor membership, we sit here and talk mm. about what it's about. Like, Ew. Didn't want to do the thing. Yeah, Crunch As was sponsor-only, though. But I yeah, really, hypocrites! I really like hypocrites! That sounds like they're fucking doing crunch time. Also, the, anyway, yeah, the, the pitch process for After Buzz TV, it, it's not just like, hey, the show comes out this week, can we do it? It's because of scheduling and we rerun 30 to 35 shows a day. So just being like, hey, can we do this one? It takes a little bit longer and day five came out and then we got to talk to everybody here at, at RTX last year and it, the time frames didn't match up. There is a month now leading up to season two, so I'm not saying that it's impossible, but we haven't started talking about it yet, but we could! For the record, love day five. It is amazing. It's so good. Oh my god. Um, we're running short on time, no, we're so on, we're, 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 we're out of we're time. Out. We are out of time. <laughs> we're done. We got time is up. Yeah. Oh, sorry, guys. Um, let's talk afterwards. Yep. All right, well, yeah. that does it for our panel. So and Jen and I have to take up. Thank you so much for, for joining us. Thank you. Actually,
if um, you guys all want to come up here, let's person. get a picture of everybody. Oh, okay. Same. Oh, okay. What? They're the the bubble. Mercy.